Welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, board, Select Board Board of Health meeting being held this January 26, uh, 2022. Uh, time now is 5.06. Uh, the meeting is remote uh, on Zoom. Meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate and alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access to Television, better known as FCAT. Uh, dial in number for this is 312 626 6799 or 929 205 6099. And the meeting ID code is 9116041580. Uh, those of you on Zoom uh, can go to the Town of Deerfield website, uh, go on the calendar for today. And uh, if you go to the Select Board uh, Board of Health meeting, uh, the Zoom link will be there. So, um, so, um, so uh, we're going to. Uh, declare that a quorum is present of the select board, board of health members in attendance, um, declare that the open meeting may be detrimental to litigation, bargaining and negotiating position of the town on these matters. A motion for executive session uh, made by you, Trevor. Yep, I'll make a motion pursuant to general law chapter uh, 30A, section 21A3 and subject to the chairman's uh, declaration that a roll call vote uh, and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss uh, one strategy with respect to litigation billings at all the uh, town of Deerfield at all uh, land court docket number 21. This is 000597. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town and Two, a uh, strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police, um, IUPA, comma, AFL, CIO, police, and UPSEU, highway, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. And pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A2, the select board may meet to discuss, uh, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or contract negotiations with the town administrator, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town and pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section A6, the select board may meet to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or value of land. In the town of Deerfield Assessors Map 168, lot 21, parcels 2-1 and 2-2, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negoti negotiating position of the town. Do a second? Uh, Dave Wolf, a second. Okay. So I we'll declare that they, uh, we're going to executive session. Um, Alex, can you send us to a breakout room? I, I'll, I'll, I'll call vote. I'll, I, Trevor McDaniel. <coughs> Aye, Dave Wolf. And will it, uh, my motion to, to um, in, invite uh, Kate Federoff, John Paturic, um, Council Brian uh, Winner, and Casey Warren, Town Administrator. And Carolyn. And Carolyn Ness when she <laughs> arrives. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> I'll repeat that again. Welcome back to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for January 26, 2022. We are reconvening out of executive session and back into open session. It looks like 7.50. Oh my God. 7.48, yeah. We got a lot of business left to do, so we're gonna rock and roll right through it. Um, Dave will be back to chair the meeting and he's back. I'm, I'm back. Okay. So our, our appearances um, was postponed for Ember Gardens. Yep. Till so, next uh, week. Selectman reports. Uh, I, I would just want to say that the 350th is moving ahead and anyone that's interested in the parade or the gala 
um, committees, especially, they should be um, getting in touch with our committee. Okay. Uh, Trevor, anything? Or you want I, to just try I, to expedite, go right yeah. to COVID-19 measures? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. We can, we can cruise right into that. Okay. Um, Alex, uh, why is he on? Yes, he is. Welcome. Hi. Alex. Well, How's it going? Did you want to uh, just, uh, if you want to review some of the latest data for the town of Deerfield on uh, COVID? Absolutely. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So bear with sure. me. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yep. All right. Let me provide the correct thing image again. Okay. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. We are, we're doing fantastic so far when it comes to COVID-19 uh, data. We, of course, um, can do better and we are improving, which is just wonderful. Uh, th th this first slide is um, taken today, just a little snapshot of the uh, Massachusetts Department of Public Health dashboard. And um, it has a lot of great information, including uh, case counts, uh, seven day average um, for testing as well, for hospitalization rate and for uh, the death rate as well. Uh, we'll move right along. I'm gonna minimize my thing, that way I can see the whole thing. Okay, and this is the um, percent positivity rate. And let's see. If I, can you guys see this laser yep. pointer? Yep, we can. Yep. Good, okay, it worked. Command L, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. And um, so right now, uh, the latest um, number of COVID-19 um, testing data was just published from uh, DPH. And we're at 10.37%, which is uh, statewide. Uh, down statewide, yep. um, down quite a bit. Uh, from our peak, which looks like it's about 22 to 23%. Mm -hmm. And on the seven day average statewide, we're looking at hospitalization rate and it is going down. The peak was around uh, an additional 700 just one week ago. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see the numbers drop, which is really good. Uh, this is more information if you want to look at it. It's a beautiful link. Um, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to move into uh, the Maven um, with the Deerfield uh, positivity rate. Um, and the information in COVID-19 testing data, uh, when I talk about positivity rate, I mean the number of positives over the total, uh, those tested within uh, that time frame. And this could, uh, the way that the state calculates it is, uh, the number of total tests. So it could be one uh, individual who gets multiple tested mm -hmm. uh, tests and, you know, test positive uh, three times if it's a PCR. And I do want to say with the state data, they are reporting only uh, Neckler or PCR tests. Um, so as we can see, um, the date range, we have um, sort of peaked. Um, within the January 2nd through um, January 15th, 14-day uh, window. And the latest report came out where Deerfield is at 8.48%. Uh, so we're, we're, we're down 2% uh, from uh, just um, two weeks, oh, well, a week ago reported uh, 14 days ago. And then now we'll move on and we have uh, the Deerfield numbers uh, for case count. And this might be a little bit heavy, but uh, in the blue, we have the total Deerfield case count uh, for COVID-19. And uh, in the orange, this is the Deerfield Academy uh, cases as well. Uh, this uh, report um, and this one, uh, this one here, this one is also including the antigen tests, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this isn't just, this is just the ones that are reported in our surveillance system. And if we were to move the DA cases, we actually see a huge difference in the uh, total count of, uh, or incidence rate 
And this is, this is very interesting. So this is just the number of new cases reported daily throughout that time span. And as we can see, we did have a peak um, around um, January 8th. And it looks like uh, if we were to move the DA cases, uh, January 10th would be our peak. And so we're starting to see cases go down and, and that decline is, is really nice. Um, you know, I just wanna say continue public health measures really work. Uh, we see uh, vaccine rates are, are, are doing, a, uh, I mean, I just saw a 23% um, increase in the five through 11 year olds for vaccine right. uh, and just, just uh, a week ago. And we just had the Vax bus come uh, on the 14th of January. And so we're starting to see, uh, and that's for uh, one single dose uh, of a partially fully vaccinated status. And uh, you, you can access getting your vaccine record card at, um, from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. You can also look at where to get your vaccine, COVID vaccine. We know that social distancing measures also are very um, effective. Uh, and wearing a surgical mask, you know, is going to really lower the uh, transmission rate as well. Uh, the use of HEPA filters and another secondary prevention strategy is to get um, tested and to um, isolate if you do uh, test positive for a number of days and to quarantine as, as much as you can wearing masks and, and what have you uh, for the general public and hand washing still number one uh, best way to prevent the spread of disease and just good uh, general hygiene. Right. So that is it for COVID-19 um, updates at this time. Right. Um, Actually, Alex, there's questions? one I just wanna, yes. I just wanna mention um, on the PCR tests versus the antigen tests, there seemed to be some confusion. PCR tests um, is the number of times that the, you know, it's uh, evolving, they, they spin around and, they, and you can be positive for, I don't know, a long period of time, up to a month after you've had COVID. The That's antigen, correct. That's the correct. antigen test, the at-home test that you are administering yourself or the kind of test that Alex does, you, what happens is they are not as reliable. And the, and the reason why is because they only pick up when you're shedding virus. So if you have, have a pale color at all, that means you're either starting to get sick or you're ending your sickness. And you will, and, but it can be, you can still be sick and not, and, and have COVID, but it not, will not show up necessarily. And if there's any color whatsoever, you are shedding the virus. And, and it, we need to understand that it, this is not, oh, take the test and then you can go out. And if you have color in that test, you are shedding virus and you need to stay home and you need to wear a mask for a day or two afterwards as well. At least. Absolutely. So PCR, uh, you mentioned, is, uh, is correct. It's a polymerase chain reaction. So we're looking at the molecular level of the, the presence of the virus shedding in your body. And then we have the antigen, the rapid test, which is looking at the immuno uh, assay at the lateral flow level, which is just looking at the viral low concentration amount that is within the nasal cavity or within the, the throat. And so you can swab it and just to see uh, whether or not it's, um, you do have a, a certain level. And if you do have a certain level with the antigen one, that is, that's, and you test positive, that's most likely meaning that you are infectious during that time. So you could you know, test positive for uh, a, an antigen test, and then five days later, you can get retested again with an antigen test and you can test po uh, negative or, neg or, or positive or negative. On day seven, you could test negative. And that means that you're not infectious uh, based on that. I mean, the bi the bi now, the bi the bi now Abbott test uh, is a has a really good sensitivity rate, meaning that it's very accurate when it comes to the true uh, um, positives. Um, and so that that's a good. I mean, it, it can go ahead and detect that 
which is really good. PCR is the gold standard, of course. Uh, and if you do have any symptoms, you really do want to go ahead and go for the antigen test. It's more relatively, you know, relatively available uh, if you have that access uh, versus uh, a PCR uh, where, you know, it, you, you could go ahead and still test positive uh, for 90 days from your, um, you know, first uh, positive uh, with the PCR test. So just a few little um, caveats there. Um, so good point. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. So go ahead, Trevor. Well, I was just, uh, while we're, while we're on that, I mean, I, I was just kind of talking about, you know, we, we instituted a mass mandate the other week and said we'd kind of revisit it here just based on the number of cases we have right now, it feels a little early to be taking that down and would probably want to keep that and review it again in two weeks. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, I think it does. Yeah. It just feels like that at the moment. There's still, you know, some pretty good case counts versus what we normally see. And, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just keep evaluating as we always do and just take a look at it in a couple of weeks and Hopefully we're, you know, those, that trend that Alex is starting to show just kind of keeps dropping off and we can, we can get back to kind of yep. hopefully digging our way out of this. Oh, said that way too many times, but, um, but anyways, it just so, feels like prudent to kind of keep, keep that rolling for, for the next couple of weeks. Casey, I, do we need a motion to extend it or? No, you haven't rescinded it. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nope. Uh, next thing on the agenda is uh, discussion items. So we got the Board of Health fee changes. Okay. Yes. Um, if, if it's possible, if I could share my screen, um, mm -hmm. I, I forgot to uh, send the most uh, updated copy and the one that's in your packet, just a little bit uh, different uh, when it comes to the food um, section. Uh, okay. So I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Yep. Okay. Yep, go ahead. Okay, are you able to see what I, uh, the, the fee schedule? Can you blow it up a little bit? I will blow it up. How we have old it? eyes, Alex. I'm so, I got old eyes. I got, you know, in my head. <laughs> Is that nice. a little bit better? Yeah, that helps. That's okay. better, yep, thank you. You're welcome, all right, and so, um, basically with the fee schedule, um, uh, the, uh, septics, um, title five is really, um, um, increasing. Um, can you, is there, uh, I don't have a, 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 an old one, so I'm not sure how much we're going up or how much we're going down, or I'm sure we're not really going down in many of these because we need to cover staff time for a lot of this stuff. And we haven't changed our fees for a very long time. Yes. Let me so go ahead and, and pull up. Uh, the difference. Uh, bear with me. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's okay. I just want to I, just for some background. All right. Let me see. Let's see. It has been quite a few years since we've. I mean. I, I can't remember the time doing this when I've been here. So I think it's been a while, right, Carolyn? It's been, uh, I think like six or seven years, yeah. yeah. Mr. Chair, through you, I believe it was 2013 the last time we changed the schedules. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Com com Thank you. Comprehensively. Right. You did do a change yeah. back in November. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So it's been ten, almost 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> time goes by fast. It does. <laughs> and you're having fun. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Okay, let me try this again. Okay. I, I had to go bearing, you know, swimming in, in my room. <laughs> I apologize. No okay, worries. here we go. So let's see, what is this doing? Is this, oh, is that, this helps. that helps? Yep, sees okay. where we were, current, current and uh, yeah. That, okay, that's so I, I drafted up a hypothetical fee change increase. Um, and so the difference that we see here um, when it comes to perks, uh, there's a difference of uh, 150. 
Okay. Uh, when it comes to Title V, it's 100. Uh, there's a difference when it comes to disposable construction uh, um, system uh, permit. So a disposable construction permit, $50. Design plan, $50 increase. Food service establishment, $50. And uh, temporary uh, food establishments, there's a 0% increase. Uh, when it comes to mobile food unit, when it comes to pre-operational, um, it's a one, it, it, we are, um, it's a $150 increase uh, for the plan review, $100. Um, so basically uh, $50 or $25 difference um, uh, uh, overall. So, so um, uh, on the mobile food units, so we didn't really have a pre-operational inspection before. That's right? correct. That's correct. So, and then, and so that's a, a new entity comes to town. There's a one-time fee to kind of look at this, you know, make sure that they're all in compliance. And, and is, and then the difference between the mobile food unit plan review, isn't that, is that the same thing? Uh, so the plan review is also just looking at um, the um, the application itself. So the pre-operational inspection would be uh, making sure that the truck is able is, is operational, uh, and and usually that takes a you know on you know uh, depends on the situation, but uh, th th there are uh, some um, inspectional. Um, uh, cost to it that um, it's not it's most of the time not just a, a one time uh, event, unfortunately, uh, but it could uh, change it could be uh, a one time thing so the I just wanted to break it down a little bit uh, when it comes to the uh, plan review and for the uh, first time inspection just to make sure that they are operational. Uh, that they meet code a lot of times the setup is not actually correct. And so Alex has to, then he goes back and re-inspects as well. So it's $250 to just get started? Just to get started. Uh, we, we can go ahead and, and change that, um, of course, uh, if you want that uh, pre-operational with the plan review, and we can just go ahead and break it down. Because it's... Um... So you have 250 plus 35. So you're you're almost you're almost 300 bucks just to get in the door. So there's also a line here for the food establishment. I also put the plan review there for new operations as well. Um, and with the food uh, with the mobile food unit as well, um, that's going to be for new applicants as well. Um, Basically, uh, it takes time and effort in order to go ahead and make sure everything is uh, in compliance when it comes to uh, being ready and open and, you know, uh, working in the town of Deerfield. It's usually about two, two to three hours for an inspection and an hour's worth of paperwork, Trevor, which includes not just Alex's pay, but also clerical support. We have to, we're, this is to cover his actual, I mean, this is to cover the actual expense to the town. I get it. I, I think my, my, just my concern is that, you know, I, I think I, I talked to Alex a little bit on this too, is that um, I just want to make sure like I. Once, once they've been through the plan and the pre-inspection, they can come into town for $35 a time. It, right. This is just basically to make sure that they're up to code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, I mean, we can have a lower, a lower fee, but then the town is subsidizing it. Well, I just, I just want to make sure like if somebody comes in to do an event, like we're not taking like all the profit, I mean, 300, bucks to just open up for a one-time event here is a lot a lot of money 
Well, the other night, uh, last the week before last, um, Friday night, uh, they had a food truck up at Deerfield Academy. Mm -hmm. Normally, we would, Dick and I would just go, you know, because it was seven o'clock at night or seven thirty at night. You know, it was for the kids when they were playing hockey out yeah. or skating out in the rink. So normally, Dick and I would just go. We'd collect our fifty bucks or a hundred, whatever it was before. Yeah. And there would be no charge to the town. And the money would just the check would just go into general fund. Mm -hmm. Well, you're we're paying Alex to do that. Dick and right. I don't want to do this anymore. Right. And so Alex is staying until 7:30 at night to go out and do the inspection. Almost do, slipping and sliding, you know. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, doing the paperwork. And then, you know, so there is a charge. This is ours. He put hours in for, you know, the you sure. Know, for hours working so yeah. it's up to us whether i mean and you know just to be fair deerfield academy was what was it were they paying two thousand or three thousand to the so, so uh, uh, that's the other thing too uh, i mean we've done they we sell the food so right. people these food trucks do make money trevor yes and they do want to make sure that we're not taking like a majority of their profit be you know for for somebody to come to town um well, absolutely i was, I was told lot. i was told by dean um at um treehouse it's between five and six thousand dollars and they get no they charge nothing treehouse charges right. for that mm -hmm. so for for them to pay us a pre-inspection fee to make sure that they're up to code because the best yeah, i agree with that yep the, the most um the risk for foodborne illnesses is highest in these food sure. trucks Yep. Especially in warm weather. I mean, when it's sub zero out, you know, the likelihood of foodborne illness is a lot less. But when it's 100 degrees out uh, in the middle of the summer, that's a whole different situation. <laughs> so, sure. Trevor, uh, we have to make sure that we're covering the costs of these food trucks. Because yep. that does seem to be the more, um, the, the, what's the trend of the business. And, and it's just, they're on weekends. And we're going to be paying Alex. So is we as a town, do we subsidize that or do we cover our costs? So I do want to, I, I do want to, it. I just want to make sure that we're, we're being fair as all and that we're covering our costs, but we're not like making it un, unaffordable for somebody to come to town. That's yeah. all. So I, I just want to say okay. just, just amongst, um, you know, the board of health discussion that when it comes to uh, the food trucks, I have uh, surveyed, uh, a number of food truck operators as well. And I, I was a little bit surprised uh, how, how profit and overhead costs and whatnot uh, is a little bit different than the actual uh, perceptions that we may have um, okay. as a public. Good. And for me, I do want to be um, just, I, I want to be equitable in that regard. Mm -hmm. It's not just Deerfield that they're operating in. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so I think it's really important just to make sure that we understand the fact that yes, uh, there is an increase in, in the fees. And unfortunately the work is still being done, if not more work. And so we just need to go ahead and um, ensure that the cost of the inspections and the work going into it as a board of health, that we are maintaining that and yeah. in you know uh, optimizing it as, as, as such a way that is effective. Yep, yeah. sounds good. Rocky had his hand up. If you're taking public I'm comment, not taking any comments. Okay. Yeah. Public uh, public comment. I think is at the end of the meeting, right? Yeah, save, Rocky. If you don't mind, just saving it. We'd love to hear it. Um, okay, sounds good. Any anything else on the schedule you wanted to talk about, or well, good? if we if we what we need to do is since we we have Alex on board is when the DPH comes out with any kind of adjustments, then we need to adjust our um, fee schedule. It shouldn't be like every ten years or right. Eight or something so um if if alex sees that there is a workload shift because of new requirements we will update these 
on a more regular basis. And that's, you know, I just want to make sure that that's clear too. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, this is, this is, we are covering our costs because I, I know that there is some concern about, you know, increasing the hours, but there's just truly isn't enough hours to do all the things that we've been doing. And, um, and I truly I'm exhausted too. So I, you know, I'm so thrilled that we have Alex on board and it makes sense that we cover our costs now. For sure. Good. Do you need a motion on this or? No. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the um, fee schedule presented for um, the Deer, Town of Deerfield Board of Health. And um, I will second that. I think he's muted again. I think we, for some reason that it's not coming through again, David. No, I don't know why, but it was working for a while there. Check your earbuds, David. Oh, oh there it goes. Yep, we got you. It kicked out the earbuds. My earbuds are going dead, so. <laughs> okay. So uh, I had a motion, Carolyn I'll, seconded. I'll yeah. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Uh, next uh, item is the uh, wastewater treatment phase one upgrade uh, change order. Yeah. So I can talk a little bit about this. When the when we did the um, so this this is really all comes down to EverSource. So when when we did the initial review, you know, EverSource kind of said, well you know, your transformer is going to be either enough to deal with it, or it's going to need a certain amount um, there. And then, you know, Eversource doesn't give you the final until they come in and do the full evaluation. So that's kind of where we're at with this. You know, we're certainly well within our contingency and all, um, but this is a change order. Um, uh, we've gotten approval from uh, already from USDA on it. The engineers have looked at it. All we're, uh, and and they've, they've gone and cut the check on this because you never know how long it's going to take for them to get the transformer up and running. Um, so ever, uh, so Waterline is, has already cut the check for Eversource to do that. It, we really don't have a choice. It, it's just going to take a larger transformer to run the plant. So, um, and, and that is really the difference, which is the, um, uh, I don't know if I have the total with me. Do I have that here somewhere? This is sixteen thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars and sixty-seven cents. No, it is. Um, Six thousand. I have two. I have two change orders, and they both have to do with the EverSource. But one, I think, is the um, so a new pad is needed. The uh, the following PCO represents the material changes required for EverSource changes. Um, Utility charges uh, are by the owner and are being processed in a separate PCO to allow for uh, allow Waterline to keep EverSource on track. I think it was it was twenty seven thousand four hundred five dollars and fifty six cents. Yep, and then the and then the second one was nine thousand four eighty eight sixty five. Uh, so the total. I don't know if we have that. Thirty six thousand eight ninety four twenty one. Thank you. I don't know why I don't see it as a total anywhere, but I don't see that total either. It's I have the two items, but I don't. Oh, here it is on the main. It's on the cover sheet, actually. Got it on the cover sheet. Yep. Increase of this change order is thirty six eight ninety four twenty one. So I, I would make a motion to approve um, the change order number seven and nine. And that would be a total of thirty six thousand eight ninety four twenty one. And I will second that, Carolyn. Okay. Um... All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Chair McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Uh, next thing is the renewal of the MSP dispatch services MOU. I make a motion to approve that. This is um, this is the uh, dispatch services that they've done since 1994. Uh, they're doing it at no charge still, um, and it's a five-year contract, which can be renewed as well if no one kind of says they don't want renewed so i make a make a motion to approve the um you know authority having jur jurisdiction over doing the um 
Public Safety 911 dispatching. Um, I will second that. This is Carolyn. I sit on the Board of Oversight for um, Shelmer Control Dispatch, and um, we don't pay anything. So this so would be not to approve it. The one question as I read through this was, um, it said the town agrees to designate a liaison and agrees to work with the governing structure. Is that what you do, Carolyn, already through that board? Or is I'm, there another? I'm the, well, I'm the municipal rep and I'm voted by the select board associate, the select board association. Okay. And so, yes. I wasn't sure if we also needed to, to vote you in as a. Well, John sits on the oversight board. Oh, that okay, was my John question. Whether it was John yeah. or you? John. So, John. John, sits, okay. John yeah. sits on the oversight board as representing the police. Perfect. I sit on the oversight board representing municipal. Representing municipal. And, um, I know Zach's on a subcommittee for EMS. So okay. I would say that Deerfield is pretty We're covered. Okay. That Deerfield is good. Good, good. So I've, I've made the motion. Oh, and I second it. Yep. Carolyn, second? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Nest. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Okay. Uh, next is a vote to discontinue certain funds. Casey, you want to address that? Thank you. Mr. Chair, we received, as Ms. Hancock was leaving, we received this request to address certain municipal funds that had been run down to small amounts. For instance, the municipal building fund we use as the funding source for some of the maintenance project projects that we set up in our capital project fund last for the beginning of this fiscal year. It was about $51,000. So there's there are balances left in these funds and I gave you Barbara's memo. Mm -hmm. um, what I would suggest we do, and I did confer with, confer with, with, with sorry, sorry. Yeah, the other charger. She had yeah. spoke with, uh, with Brenda about this as well. And um, I think she's talking about moving the, moving the funds into the general fund and just wiping these out. Really, they're just, you had the municipal building fund, which we ran down to a balance of 1,526.98. Um, and then land land preservation was inactive. The town used to vote an amount equal to the percent of the APR land balance, but it's down to $1,000. The veterans fund, which is 2,146.93, which was probably moved in. Oh, go ahead, Casey, now you're back. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say is I checked in with Brenda about all of these funds. We need a vote of the board to discontinue them, except the veterans fund. We need a little more research on that. So okay. we would prefer if you're going to take a vote, leave that one open until we can finalize our research. Okay. And that and wasn't the, something that she and Barbara had talked about. Was, and do you, do you want the vote, the balance of the funds to go into the general fund? For the other have the fund i i would say the vote should be to close the fund which and closes then, it out the, to the general fund right okay great so i'll make a motion to uh close the municipal building fund the land preservation fund and the insurance in, uh, indemnity fund i will second that carolyn okay any further discussion no nope. oh. all those in favor i trevor mcdaniel i carolyn ness and we'll day move the veterans fund to a later date. Okay. Um, so the next is the uh, district local technical assistance request submission. So I know a lot. Um, um, I haven't had time to review it myself. I'm sorry. Okay. To mark off. I'm marked off. Uh, you know, I know we got a lot of. Um, requests from different boards kind of gave, gave their opinion as well. And I know that there's been a request for money to do um, a housing study as it relates to senior housing. Um, and then I, I kind of just went through this and filled out what I thought was important and um, ranked them, but it doesn't mean that, you know, I, I'll take your advice on where, where we should request. I, I guess 
What I had um, number one was grant management assistance, including ARPA, um, because I felt that was the number one thing that we need to get our act in order to be able to deal with ARPA, to be able to deal with the funds, um, to deal with all of these projects, senior housing included. Um, so that, that was my number one. Number two was the senior housing um, assessment. Um, I, I had a, uh, like a number two and a half was human resource management. We really need regional help to foster collaborations between the town and the schools. I talked to the schools about that, administration about that last week. and. Um, they recognize it as well. It's just a lot of info back and forth, but you know, I know that's not something we're going to act on. But I just just ideas. Um, you know, sewer treatment and, and water operators. Some training for that I think is really critical. That we need to be focused on that. I know that these aren't are asked, but while they're on the list, I thought we should voice them and then work with DEP to support more operator training programs for Western Mass. Um, and then and and maybe this is just advice to them that. If they're talking with other towns, they would they might do something not really for Deerfield, but just it would affect us in the long run if they put effort towards these. Um, and then number three was the master plan. Um, we we need to update that. So so I had grant management, especially ARPA for number one, senior housing for number two, uh, master plan number four. Uh, excuse me, number three, and then number four was planner, a uh, regional planner. And number five was regional help with HR between towns and schools. So that that was my two cents. But I had um, senior housing it was first because that you know we need to move that project along. I had number two is human resource help. I did not have the grant writer, um, and the reason why uh, for ARPA funding because um, the, I believe that that's not going to be happening in any time soon for you know the FERCOG to be doing and that was why we had decided to do our ARPA funding in one big project so that the that the reporting would actually be easier um I I think you know I I think it's really important that we just focus on the senior housing um survey and and then the human resource thing, because that's a more long-term plan. And then, I, you know, then we, I don't disagree with you know, the third rank kind of things, but, um, you know, you're not going to get any money without open space and master plans. So, I mean, I can, again, agree on that, but it's, we need to figure out what, what we're going to focus in on. That's all. So, and, and I'll go ahead. I'll let David talk to people. Okay, well, um, I agree that senior housing is probably the highest priority for me. Um, and only because of the liability, um, the wastewater treatment uh, operators was actually second. Because sure. I'm afraid, you know, what we're going to be facing if we have to go to contract. And um, I'm trying to remember my third one. I've gone through it. Um, well, so uh, I would agree with the. I, you know, I, I will. I will back you too on the the senior housing thing. I know that's vital, and I know a lot of a lot of departments. You know, committees want that, and. Um, and, and you obviously both have it as number one, so I would support you in that. Um, that obviously would be our number one pick. Um, you know, I, I guess the number two, you know, I have grant management assistance. I, I'd like to hear them out, what they're going to do, what they're planning, um, or, or if there is another entity that can, that can do it, because we're not going to be able to really tackle any of these projects realistically without some staff and help. And I know David's talked a lot about getting, you know, getting a planner or getting a grant writer and Carolyn agrees. I think we all agree on that, just how we do that. Um, so, and that's fine if we have another ent another avenue that we're gonna deal with that, but that is like number one in my mind of, you know, relieving stress on our office and making sure we actually get the projects done. So, um, 
So I'm not sure what we put, you know, if we put. Um, the problem is, Trevor, it's not grant writing, it's grant management. And that's not what they're offering. They aren't? No, no. I thought they said grant management assistance. It says grant management, including ARPA. So why don't we hear them out on what their plans are? Do they have somebody in mind or they hired somebody or, you know, I know there's other towns that have pulled in other consultants to do that. I know. Um, so I, just, I just don't see how, uh, it's not that I don't think the shared services are important, but I think you have to fix your, find your partner because the problem is you get lumped in with towns that are so different from us. We have a lot of stuff happening here. Right. So we don't fit the profile of a lot of the smaller towns. And I mean, I, I unfortunately, we're not really big either. I mean, I, I would see us looking for shared services for human um, HR. And because then it's more, I don't know, it, although we have, as Casey knows, we have constant crisis. Yeah, time. and I think, I think you know, but, we're, we're not going to do any of those projects we have in mind right now. They're just not happening. We're not, we don't have the, the bandwidth right now to do any of them if we don't get some help. Whether it's through this, I agree, you know, it doesn't have to be through, through for a cog. I, I'd be curious to hear what they have to say, but, uh, or at least learn from it and then maybe go out doing something different. Um, so I'm not sure what to really ask for here other well, than seeing what, how what happens is, is there, when you said, talk about municipal service sharing feasibility, okay, and matchmaking, what they were going to do is match you with another town, maybe, or they're going to give, you know, like you do your shared police or shared mm -hmm. fire, yeah. they're going to give yeah. you a feasibility study. They're not, yeah, not interested say, in that. Right. But that's what they're going to offer you because what they're coming down for is saying, hey, this, you know, we're not going to give you a person. This is okay. what we're looking for a person. Yeah, we need a person. Right. This is municipal service sharing feasibility. Or other that technical makes, assistance. Right. It's yeah. not just like public safety where you say ambulance. It's it's to say, is this feasible? And mm -hmm. we're we're not, we're beyond feasible. Yeah, we we're like now. we need someone to come and shovel us okay. out. That's a good point. Thank you, Carolyn. I didn't really realize that was the heading. Right. Well, and that's why I say the human resource in the long run. The human resource is is well, they, I think a, a, a decent. It's it, we have. It is a crisis. We have Casey mm -hmm. is way overworked on this, but yes, it, it it is worth spending some time to try to get that sorted out. And 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 if they could match us with two or three other little town, you know, two or three towns, or Casey just works with Sunderland and Waitley, and we try to figure out how we're gonna share a person that would be more more a uh, thoughtful thing to do than say the grant thing we've got to do something now on the grant Casey? yeah mr chair through you this has been yeah. discussed on a, a county level and locally with our adjoining towns mm -hmm. and with the school for many years it's never gotten off the ground i think the I think we could consider a different tack, and that's uh, a vendor contract for certain HR services. And, and but we have to implement a manual before we can do that because our ability to interpret based on the bylaw is limited yeah. and creates a situation where we don't have the resources in terms of being able to pivot, being able to, to mm -hmm. make those interpretations effectively without changing what we're interpreting right well i mean we, we've got senior housing number one um what, what else what do we want to put for number two and three i i don't i mean so casey so you're recommending that we don't go with feasibility study then I'm not recommending anything, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, through you. I'm not recommending anything. I'm simply saying this conversation's happened on a regional level for a long time. It's been hard to bring other towns into, into the conversation because each town has very different 
in has very different bylaws and or manuals with interpreted to be interpreted. So I think this has been on the burner for a while for the COG. Um, and we've tried different avenues. Me as a town administrator prior to this, Wendy when she was here, and even Bernie when he was here with our adjoining partners. And it's just a difficult lift. Yeah. Um, I think you would find there may be some interest on at least one adjoining town's part, but the lift is actually the time frame. What is the cost to actually administer benefits? Because HR is not just benefits management, it's dealing with complaints and discipline on a regular basis. And that's what takes up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, it's not just one thing or the other. How do you manage to pull those things together? And at one point when this was, when the conversation was happening between, and this is before Darius, when the conversation was happening between Conway, Sunderland, Waitley and Deerfield, we had an estimate of at the very least, a manager and a, and a half FTE specialist because of the amount of work between all four towns and Frontier. Yeah. So you were talking two people, if almost two people. Right. And, and we all saw the lift was going to be heavy. So it, it really didn't get to that point in terms of, I, I would certainly be interested to see how the COG is framing it now, what that feasibility would be but I know we've discussed it in the time I've yeah. been a town administrator. Um, I know it's been discussed on multiple occasions because the town administrators have showed up and really given the cog input on what it is they're struggling with. I guess I've been just discouraged filling this out every year. I know. What do, I mean, so we've got number one. You guys want to do it, do it. I don't care what you do, but I just want to tell you what my experience has been in the past. How about we just do a pollinator habitat corridor for number two? No. We need more bugs no. down here. No. <laughs> Master no. plan? Yeah, I think that's, I, I think. So let's put one and two and leave it at that. All right. Um, no, no, because so remember, do, number two, we, I, I agree with we, Dave. I think we need to, to look at the um, uh, the sewer treatment operator situation. So let's put that down as number two, because okay. that, that is really crazy uh, countywide, really, really statewide. And I don't know. Uh, I just I mean, don't, I don't think anything's going to gonna happen with it, but, I mean, but I think it's but, super important. Yeah, so I agree with Dave that that should be number two, and then um, then put down the master plans. Okay, because we need that master plan, right? Isn't it expired or getting to be expired? I I think the master plan has been expired, um, but I think our open space plan. Denise, uh, is our open space plan expired too? I thought it is. Put some... Is it? Mr. Chair, through you, yes, it is. Okay. They're working open space and rec is working on that right okay. now, Carolyn. Thought we put All right. So why don't you put master plan slash open space plan as our third option? Okay. Because if if a couple towns are doing open space plan, then they'll pick us. I mean, yeah. they'll pick they can throw us in the pot. If, yeah. if a master plan is a lot more work, and they might only pick two master plan towns or three. Just speak, Casey. <laughs> Casey, just go. Mr. Chair, through you. Yeah. We already are on, yeah. DL we use DLTA funds this year, right. actually last year to do the OSRP. And then we funded some money through our own, um, through that line item. So we already are in the phase, in the, the pipeline for the open space and rec, I think it makes more sense to go for the master plan because we're regurgitating and, and yeah. redoing the, the OSRP right now. So, I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't make that clear. No, the survey, we're getting help for the survey part, but are they actually gonna help us write the open space plan? Yes. Oh, okay. Then don't put that on, just put master right. plan. Okay. okay. I didn't realize that we were already um, slated for that. Sounds good. Um, I don't know, Denise had, uh, uh, she was just gonna talk a minute about grant writers because that 
came up just a few minutes ago on Trevor just brought it up. Would that be all right, Dave, that Denise could talk about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, Cause I think she interviewed a couple uh, or talked to Casey about it. Denise, why don't you go ahead and see what you found? Oh, sure. Okay. So that, so this pertains to the, um, community one stop for growth grant. Okay. That we're looking for, uh, for the, for the, um, former senior center that will be the municipal building and, you know, hopefully. So yes. So I did, Carolyn had given me the name of one woman. I found two other grant writers. Uh, one said she'd love to write the grant, but she doesn't want to manage it. And we need someone to manage it because, you know, uh, admit is tapped out. And they shouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have the capacity to do that. Um, the other one is just too busy with other grant writing. But the, the third one, and actually it's the one that you recommended, Carolyn, uh, is sounds really good she has a good good resume had a good conversation with her and so i'm going to do a zoom with casey and her on monday morning at nine o'clock and um she's already i mean she's already looking at it you know the grant the actual grant the nof is 39 pages so <laughs> it's it's pretty comprehensive but the first step is to do um submit an expression of interest and then you do get some guidance and the um, submission is due March 18th. So the sooner we get that in, the better, because we'll have more time to seek guidance from the e EO, HED, and partner agencies. After that, um, she already knows, you've got to watch three webinars first, and then do that. And then once submitted, you know, we'll have access to all different staff from different partner agencies. And then um, we can also request a meeting to review uh, the priority projects. And I know that, you know, if we got it in, I think before February 4th, Casey, I think you said we could do five projects, but at this point we can do two. And so I'm just, I'm not really clear. I need clarification. We may only fit into the category of rural and small town grants. And that would be a $400,000 cap that we could get. And the only other ones, I think this has only been out for a year. And I did look and, a couple different neighboring communities have gotten grants, 25,000, 30,000, 60,000, but Williamstown did get a full $400,000. Uh, Trevor? Well, I, my concern is just, you know, in the MMA conference the other day, you know, you've, you've got the governor, the lieutenant governor, all senators saying there's like $17 billion coming to the state, right? And you need to get in touch with our one-stop program so you can get some of this money and partner right. with, the, with, the, with the feds. And then, you know, to hear, like there's $400,000 possibly if we're lucky. Well, th that, that's for this one. And I'm not sure yeah. whether that's the only category right. that we fit into. We've got, they've got to open up categories or find a way to, you know, they've got to funnel that money to us. I mean, they just have to, right. there's got to be programs to, right. so, and, so, I, and maybe um, just flushing this out will help, you know, when they do yeah. the one stop, they'll be able to say, hey, well, you don't fit this, but you fit this. And Right, right. That's, yeah, that's the idea behind you know the how, one Yeah, we're, you know how, Trevor, we, we went to that woman and we just mm -hmm. stood there in front of her and said, we really need your help. We really need your help. We, you know, we can't be building yeah. all these conference rooms and office right. space. And, and not meet the needs of like our seniors. And she agreed. And then we were, you know, had come out, she'd come out with yeah. her team to do the, this is sort of the online version of that. Right. And so they initially put like small money out there, but I think what happens is this is a feeder. So mm -hmm. if be. we take our ideas to them, right. we could, we could get some design money, like, somebody could design the campus so we know where the damn parking lot's going to go and and you know we'll get some money for that but it would feed us into the clean energy group that would give us the and you know money for um you know uh thermo pump system or whatever to heat and cool all our buildings in the elementary school or it would channel us into um you know the restoration grant for the the old grammar school or it would channel us into the grant program for our senior center, our new senior center that would come off of the old grammar school. So I, I think it's the start 
And yeah. I mean, Denise, is that what your impression is too? Well, okay. So Carol, for, first of all, this, this is really this is really a portal. So you write you write one, uh, you do one submission, and then it goes out to all the other ones. Okay. Again, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to look through this a little more thoroughly in the next couple of days. And then I think this prospective grant writer is also doing that. So I just wanna see if we could fit into different categories. Yep. Um, and you know, another thing you said that, that Joe and Natalie will be there next week. So I think we also have to, or you also yeah. have to identify some of the main projects. So, you know, I know this is the, the municipal building is, is number one at this point. I think, you know, th this is the most tangible project right now. You know, right. there's there's a big concept of the campus, but it's that's too nebulous. This right. is actually concrete, so this I think this is really the way to go. And then also the Leary lot. So if we have two projects, those yep. are the two perfect projects to go in. So I'll do a little more research on this, and then you know speak with you know with Casey and Alice on Monday, and and see where we'll get where we you know where we head, and then um, I'll report back to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. No, that's fine. All right. Any other questions about that? Dave, did you have any questions on this? I, I, um, because neither you or Trevor were able to make the CCI meeting on Monday, and I just felt like we were we're moving ahead, and I just want to make sure you guys feel caught up. Well, Carolyn, do you guys have to yeah, vote on um, this so we can move? Um. Yeah, I guess we should probably. Yeah. Vote that. Um, to move forward with the um, one-stop application. Well, and the CCI is 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 um, they're in favor of this. Yes, as a group. Yeah. Unfortunately, you guys weren't able to make the meeting. Do we have to vote yeah. something now, or what? I mean, well, we just it's if there's consensus to move forward, then that's okay yeah, too. To, to see what's there, put these two projects together. Yeah, yeah I mean that's yeah. the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And Denise, you said you have the Zoom call on Monday, so that can probably give us a little bit better idea. Yes. Yeah. And in in the meantime, okay. I'll I'll look over things a little more thoroughly too to see if there are any other. And there is, I, I'm not sure I'd be able to. Well, what's today? I may be able to get in contact. There is um, a contact, an email contact for the rural and small town grants, so I can probably you know email and see if that's the only category that we have to fit into. Um, what, okay. what, what we want, Denise, we have a meeting on, uh, February 10th, but that's after Joe and Natalie are here right. and we want to make sure that we have a presentation yes. of CCI, what we're trying to do, yeah. with Joe and Natalie, so they can start advocate for us. But then we right. also have to decide, uh, you know, what we want to, how we're going to approach Jim McGovern's office, mm -hmm. because I, um, had a meeting today um and yesterday let me just look at my notes um the um today's meeting of the northeast um national association of conservation districts there there is um the word is out that um the february 18th you know uh continuing res there's going to be a continuing resolution on the federal level and uh but the one bill that has passed or um, of the three that have passed is the ag bill. So the, um, that means the USDA money is coming down. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, to be, we have to be prepared for that. Um, and that's the you know, spore treatment kind of stuff, pipes, all that kind of stuff. So that, that actually is moving along really, really fast. And um, yesterday, Oh boy, we, we have to decide whether we want, how we're gonna approach Jim McGovern because we have to make sure that they're aware of, um, you know, well, our Creating a Resilient Communities group found that there is more, there's 120 million coming through the Resource Conservation Protection Program, hmm. which, and, and it's moving up the watershed. So it's, it's coming to our area. So hmm. that, is infrastructure like culverts and stuff like that, but also just um, riverbank restorations, which would be happening along River Road. So we're not really sure how that money's coming down. So we should be talking to Jim McGovern's office, not only about the National Park 
grant because Massachusetts has signed off on our park and it's sitting at the National Park Service and it's the offshore money, oil money that is already available and is not associated with any of these infrastructure projects. So we need, we should find out about our park money which is $9,900,000 basically back into the, our CPC fund. So we should be ch chasing that down. But then we got to find out how, how do we get Jim to start advocating for us for all this sewer treatment plant? Because we have another whole sewer treatment plant plus all our piping, three or $4 million worth of piping that we need to address. So I, you know, you're talking about $15 million at least. So what, how do you want to do this? Um, Trevor, do you, what do you, uh, you had talked to Jim. So I think we just need to make him have a meeting with him and find out where that, that yeah. is, where he's fund, funneling that, that money. Yeah. I mean, um, we got it. It's going to the state. So he said, I, 17 billion went to the state. You got to go get it. He said, I'll help you advocate for it. Let's get a meeting together. So, but we got to find out the programs that they're in. And I guess, putting the project at least before one stop. That way we can say, hey, this is one project. I mean, we should put all five in, but it's having the staff to be able to write. I mean, I don't know if the one stop Denise is like- doing, Denise is organizing. That oh. first con conversation to say, we've got a sewer project, we've got a town hall, we have a senior center, we, you know, we have um, the downtown area. We've got all these projects. We've got, you know, all the sewer pipe going up to Eagle Brook and the road to go up to, we've got so many different projects where do we prioritize these with the state? Can I just say something about that? I think I think it's going to be too late to put the five projects in for the one stop because I believe the deadline for an expression of interest is February yep. 4th. That's not going to happen. So oh, that that's, that's why if we move on this quickly and if Alice is the right person, which I think she sounds like she is, um, we can at least do the Leary lot and the mun municipal building. That mm -hmm. brings back to next week. Do you guys want, because Joe and Natalie will, will be there, Lily and I can do basically the same presentation. Uh, no, Lili, um, Joe and Joe and uh, Natalie aren't coming till the ninth. I'm sorry, the ninth. Yes. So yeah. Lily and I could do the same presentation because it really comes, you know, just the concept of CCI, and then also we've got all the information on the postcards and that's basically everything right. everything that you just said, Trevor. Yep. So, I mean, that's at least this would be a succinct presentation. We can have it up online. We can hand these out to them so they'll have takeaways. Yep. So if you guys want to do that, we're happy to do that. Sounds and then good. we'll essentially do the same thing because we wanted to do a public uh, meeting on the 17th. We're going to get it out in the paper to... Chris Larrabee, who's on here, um, <laughs> talk to Chris, hi, um, about getting the word out, um, you know, the message that we want to send so that we get more public participation because we want to engage the public in this. Yep. So that's that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Okay. And if you guys agree, then, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that we are ready for a presentation on the night. Yeah. And Sounds in the good. meantime, I'll get back to, I'll, you know, just, I'll, I'll get well, Casey. Casey will have the information after Monday, so then she can relay that information to you about Perfect. what's what's going on. Okay. Thank you for all your help. You are welcome. Sounds My good. Pleasure. Okay. Anything else? I, I Thank you, not, Denise. We just, just wanted to make sure you guys were um, informed. I mean, in the loop. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank all you. Right. You are welcome. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um, Next thing on our agenda is the uh, designated member for the North Main Street Park Park project. Um, um, I know you, I've been attending the meeting, so I don't I'm have gonna, a problem continuing. Yeah, I'm gonna crawl under the table. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. gonna nominate Carolyn. <laughs> I'm gonna second that, right? Go ahead, away. second it, Trevor. <laughs> okay, all, all those in favor. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Trevor, yes, I'm yes. Okay. okay, majority rules. Sounds Carolyn, good. You're yeah, in. On. Okay, but <laughs> next subject is when we have <laughs> when we have decisions to make. I I want us to have the a public meeting because of I, I just want to say that you know it really makes a difference to have the three of us be putting our ideas out because we end up you know 
talking about it and 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 the best decision comes out of all three of us agreeing in the end for sure what, what we want happening yeah. I, i'm just i'm just worried with this open meeting law that um we're, we're not post them all we, yeah let's just figure out what meetings we're at all interested in and then we post them because you know, it really makes a difference to have all three of us participating if we can. And mm -hmm. I know it's a lot of work, but I think <laughs> we're always better together. And I know Casey is rolling her eyes, but she's ready to jump out of the door. I know. We I actually have a headache. <laughs> no, well, let's move this meeting sorry. along then, sorry, right? It along. It's great. Yep. No, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I hear you. There's a, there's a, re there's a reason we're keeping her on the first floor so she can't jump. <laughs> I can't even joke about it, you guys. It's awful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I can even laugh at that one. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Okay. Uh, next thing is the digitalization of the uh, historic documents. It's great. How about it? Peter Thomas is requesting that we do that. Um, it, I suppose we've got to put something together to take a look at that and see what the cost would be. Go ahead, Trevor. Oh, Casey's first. Yep. So I have an update on that, Mr. Chair. Um, yep. I was contacted after that email. I was contacted by FEMA and then the Secretary of State's office. So I've had a conversation. Um, the FEMA rep that actually called me as part of a larger group that works with the Secretary of State's Office on Preservation of Records. And those records, we have to do some investigation. So I think I have some of the information we need. But if they're permanent records, there's certain things we're going to have to do. It, it may not be digitization. It may be simple preservation. But we don't have enough information to even put an ask together. Right. Um, we might be able to make, okay. meet a, a deadline for CPC, but we don't know what we're looking at yet. So the first thing we have to do, and I actually got some help with this today, I talked to Chris Miller and asked him to go down and look at the vault and see what it looked like because I didn't have any idea what it looked like. Um, we did, as everybody knows, we had a radiator leak in the building last month. So we've been, working with the insurance company to dry the spaces out. And so Chris went downstairs. It's pretty cold right now. Chris went downstairs and he looked at the at the vault. I'm going to confer with him tomorrow. But some of the representative from the Secretary of State's office's um, recommendations involve moving the records, keeping them in some sort of cold storage and evaluating whether they're permanent records or records under our custody. So there's a lot of moving parts with this and it landed literally with no warning landed on my desk yesterday so, in terms of now having to move and get something done. So I will talk to Chris tomorrow and we're gonna figure out what we have to do. But regardless, if these are permanent records, the Secretary of State's office can come in and order us to do things. Right now we don't have money set aside for this. So I can't really tell you what it's gonna cost. And it may be that it's going to cost us even to get an estimate on what preservation would look like. It may not even be an issue at the moment, right? Because is there records have been there for 30 years? No, let's the leak. The we leak need an evaluation of that. I know, but the leak went down into the the ground. You know, it was dirt floor. Right, this is an old section, and you know we've had the identifier running for years. I'm sure there is mold, but it's mold that's been there for 30 years. It's not, this is not from the leak. This was, a, this was not a water main leak. This was right. a radiator leak in the kitchen area. And that is totally different from where the vault is. So I, I this got convoluted somehow. Yeah. Um, we'll just... I'm sure there's, I'm sure there is, we need to do something, but sure. it's not an emergency situation from this radiator leak. This is something we should have done 30 years ago they never should have been put into a damp basement to begin with so we don't have any space bingo oh I know, I know i know but that this was a decision from 30 years ago that's yeah. all and it and it's unfortunate that it is 
old records. They're from the records from the 1800s. Yeah, we want to keep them, yeah. preserve them. And we do want to keep them. So sure. we got to figure out what to do. But moving them out before the snowstorm, putting them in the church or putting them into a locked storage unit and then letting them free is a thing you do. When you archivally save documents that have mold, you put them in the freezer and you freeze everything and then you just keep brushing it off. Uh, you know, the mold spores because they freeze. They're not living anymore. And you have to just keep, you know, brushing off the mold. <laughs> and when you have boxes and boxes of them, it does take a little bit of money. But the first thing you do is you freeze them. Okay. So we got freezing temperatures right now. So let's get them out there. Okay. Well, we'll give Chris's evaluation tomorrow and make them decide what to do from there, okay? I, Mr. Um, Chair, I do have to say that whatever we do, we're gonna have, now that the Secretary of State is involved, we're gonna have to coordinate with the Secretary of State's office. Maybe maybe they're thinking it's more overblown than it really needs to be. Maybe we yeah. tell them what it is and they realize, oh, this isn't like the whole basement flooded and we have this emergency thing. This, yeah. th yeah. until they see pictures, they right. won't be able to give us some idea. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The next thing is uh, prospective MVP grants. Carolyn, any oh, ideas on uh, this? Well, Chris has got the list. Has anybody? Um, have you looked at them all? Anybody? I, I honestly don't I've see how we can tackle any MVP grant at the moment. Uh, no. Well. Uh, no Trevor, I thought you wanted. I thought you wanted to do the. Um, oh, I thought you wanted to do the tank heights and stuff. We like already that. have that written and done from DPC. It's completed, okay. all ready to go. Okay, so that goes in, right? If we want it to, I mean, we just got. We have to talk about that and make make sure we'd want to do that. But I, I just I would think that we would want that flood resiliency. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to see Dave on the second and I'll ask him okay. what the feasibility is of, of just sending that in. It, does it, does he think it fits in with phase two to be able to do that okay. for the time frame? Okay. I, I'm just saying our staff is just completely overwhelmed and I, I just don't see how we're adding more MVP projects to anybody's plate this year. I agree with Trevor on that. Well, I know we're. It's just too much. I mean, we, we're burning everybody out with it. It's just, it, they're great programs. It's great to do, but I mean, it, it, it's just an upheaval that we just, we have so many projects going on already. How can we even think about taking on any more? <sighs> okay. Again, there's more money in this program. I now. believe it. So unless there's somebody to actually implement all of it, we don't have to touch anything. Nothing. It's like well, I think we should be looking at the flood resiliency for our sewer treatment plants because that's going to take money off projects that we're going to do already. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then I think um, let's get let's see what happens with Denise and um, and Casey's meeting with Alice Rich, all right? As okay. a grant manager and um, grant manager, all right? Okay. And see what that okay. capacity does. So, uh, the problem is we, we aren't gonna know by February 1st. We, we should bypass this, Carolyn. We're, we're burning everybody out. Just, right. There's just too much to do, and there's just not enough people to do it. Well, except for the list, the, the timing is correct for the, for the tank heights, you know, the flood resiliency. Yeah, if, if, if it fits in with that phase two, right. and yeah, we can get some money on that for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's just, we already got the match, Trevor. We're doing the plan. So yep. by doing that, we're cutting the taxpayer bill by sure. 400,000 or whatever the 
you know, tanks are going to be. That makes sense. Um, you know, that just reduces the cost, you know, our borrowing costs and taxpayer cost. So I guess, Chris, that would be it. Chris, Chris, go ahead. Okay. Um, th thanks. Um, I was hoping I might get a chance to present some of this material to you. Um, I, I will say that the, the list that hopefully you've seen um, that has seven items on it was put together by your um, green infrastructure committee that you um, appointed. And there are a number of things on here that might be good tie-ins with projects that you are um, moving forward with. For example, the Leary lot, um, my understanding is that you're planning to move forward with that. And this might be a way to offset some of the costs um, for landscaping and, um, you know, uh, stormwater improvements to the Leary lot project um, and reduce some costs there. The other one that I guess I would mention specifically is that uh, number two on the list is the green entryway for the Deerfield Elementary School. I did um, have a meeting with um, Superintendent um, Modesto on this and he indicated that this was um, a priority for, for him um, and it, it's on their list of um, capital improvement projects for, for Frontier. Um, so he's interested in, in pursuing that project um, specifically. Uh, you know, the other ones I could go through, but it doesn't sound like there's um, um, a lot of interest in hearing about them. So I'll, I'll pass on that. I think they're all valuable, Chris. I just, we are like up to here and we can't even focus because there's so much going on just to try and take something else on right now. We'll just, it's just like the straw that breaks the camel's back. There's just way, like we haven't even really recovered from tree boxes and all the other stuff. And I, and I, and we've got, I do see how they would tie into these things, but just to, you know, the money we get for the amount of effort and stress that's on, that, that puts everybody under, I just, I, I feel like we need to take a year and take a breath and go, okay, what's priority number one? Let's focus on this. Let's get these things done and come back to MVP when we can handle it. The only thing is, are we, mo we're moving forward on the Leary lot, right? I mean, my, my understanding is we're going out. I mean, yeah, but you know, we need to, we need an engineer okay, and we design, need. Yeah, but the design plans are all done. Well, so not what very we, well. Well, <laughs> what we would be doing was be putting in for the estimated difference of what we were going to do and the greening difference. So you would get the match from the green in. I don't know. I just, unless, unless we had an engineer to figure all that out and we don't right at the moment. And I'm just realistically, I don't want to put more pressure on our staff right now. Just too much. But just too much. I, I'm only one person, but you guys can decide. I, I just think it's just way too much work right now in town and we don't have the staff to figure it all out. And it just, then it puts on like this time pressure and the, oh, we've got to get this in by then. And then we got to do this and then we got to yeah, get that done. Trevor, no, I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. But I'm, I'm still talking about we're, we're moving ahead with the Leary lot. So why wouldn't we want to recoup but, the cost of green stuff? Hope, let's hope we are. I just really, until we don't even have the time and the staff to get that going. Like we need to hire a grant administrator and figure out. Well, I think we're going, all, all we need to do is put in a letter of interest by February 1st. It ties you to something and like it did last time. No, this is a letter of interest. This is not the actual submittal. This is just saying that we're, this is what we're thinking of doing. And I, I again, this is cutting costs that we're going to incur anyway. But I mean, if we're moving ahead with the Leary lot, we want to make it as green as possible so we could get that green difference back. That but cost. sometimes you spend so much more on that green difference that it isn't worth doing. Like you spend all that staff time and all these people running around and then you're spending a whole lot more money for the infrastructure. And then you're like, is, is it worth the squeeze? I'm just really nervous about that. I've just seen what has happened and it's just really, it's overwhelming. And we can't do that again. Uh, Casey, do you want to say anything? Yeah. I'm, I just, I'm, I'm trying to 
protect everyone's sanity here. I, I know, I know, but these are things that we're going to do anyway, though. Well, are we? I mean, really, it's like until we get, we, we need to hire staff in the office. We need the, the staff at the, I mean, there's so many other things that are going on at the moment. It, it just, I worry that we're not going to be able to, um, I, I just, I'm just extremely worried about the bandwidth here. Oh, well, I know. It's yeah. worth very, very worried about it. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, until we get the right people in the right place, these grants are not manageable for the town of Deerfield right at the moment because we don't have the staff to manage them. Uh, Chris, what's... A lot different writing, writing it and then administering it. And the administration of it is something that's taken our office way too much time and taken away from other things. So, what, um, when's the you know, I don't have a problem saying that of uh, putting in a letter of interest on these, but we're not going to move forward on any of them in the near future. Unless we have the right people in place to administer it. And the selectman's office right now is not the place to have that done. Well, I mean, I Select see that. Board, I think the uh, Leary lot is part of the CCI. And so hopefully we will be hiring staff to handle this. I mean, because we're, my understanding was we we're going out to bid this spring for the Leary lot. There's a lot of work to do before we do that. We, we, there's no way we could go out to bid in the spring on that. We haven't even confirmed an engineering group on it yet, have you, Trevor? I mean, I, I was hoping Berkshire Design, Berkshire Design pick it up and start working with it. I yeah. know the you know the Hamshell Lumber guys are really want to hire an engineer and get working on their thing, and I know you talked with um, BBC about about that as well. But there's a lot of coordination just around that alone, and then to drop on the whole MVP thing that we have to tie into all of it is just it's just more work than it's worth at the moment. I think. I could be wrong, but I mean, until we get there, by the time the thing gets bid, or I, there'll be another cycle, I'm sure. I, I just gotta, I gotta protect the staff and the time, and I, that's my vote. But I, you know, again, it's up to you guys. Or, well, I, I want to put a letter of interest in, and then if we don't fill the application out, we don't fill the application out. But I would like to fill, fill, put a letter of interest in for the Leary lot and the flood resiliency of our sewer treatment plants, because those are two projects that I feel that we're moving forward on. And all this does is decrease it, you know, what the taxpayers are going to have to pay, what people, what we are going to have to pay for the project. But if we fit our timeline, then we don't put the Apple actual application in. If DPC says, I mean, they're, they're, you have the design ready, Trevor. You said the DPC, we asked them to have that ready. Mm -hmm. So all yeah, we had them pull it last time. Yep. And so- But it would it, eat up everything. It wouldn't, we wouldn't be getting, you know, it'd be just one thing. I, I think that was the issue last time. Chris was like, why are you putting this in? I've got it all laid out and there's just not enough money. And, and so we pulled it. Yeah, but what, that's what I'm saying is they will give us the feedback. There is more money. That $17 billion is coming into the state. Some of it is going to the MVP. So there is more money. Do they pay for people to administer grants with it? That's really what we need is somebody to do the work. We don't have that. I don't know. Okay. So, um, I don't have a problem putting in a letter of interest on um, both the things, the Leary lot and on one and five, uh, but I also want to make sure that we are not going to make out an application for these grants until we have the right personnel in place. If we don't have the right personnel in place, we are not going to apply for these grants. I would agree with that. We can't afford to have Casey do any more work. No. Well, on this. <laughs> what? I said, well, on this, she'll be doing a lot of work, but. Yeah. But, you know, just a letter of interest. Um, who's going to write out the letter of interest? 
Chris Wood. Chris? Um, I can do the letter of interest for you if you'd like. Well, I, I'm just asking, I don't know who's supposed to be doing the letter of interest. You know, if this is putting, the letter of interest is putting more work on the select board office, that's a problem for us. Will be a no. <laughs> well, again, I'm happy to do it for you. Okay. All right. So we're all set so, with the lot and the flood resiliency project on the sewer treatment plant. Uh, Casey's had her hand up four times. Casey, just talk. We don't have time for you to raise No, I, I need to respect the chair's control of the meeting, Carolyn, um, because it's been brought to my I can't see I your hand when it's up, Case. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have time for this. Come on. So, Let's... no, my question is, is it, wouldn't DPC handle a letter of interest for the wastewater yes. treatment plant project? Yes. So you're essentially putting two letters of interest in. Is that a conflict? That was my question before, because they're they're not the same. They're not the same sort of discipline, I should say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Would DBC actually be putting in something to I think MVP you grant? I think they had it all laid out for us. I, I could talk to David again on, on, on Wednesday. I think you would second. coordinate with Chris. You would just basically give the information to Chris so that we had a dollar mm -hmm. amount and what was actually going to be done. No. Right? Yeah. Again, the letter of interest is, is not <laughs> complex. Um, and it's not an application. It's not, you don't provide a detailed scope and detailed budget at that point in time. Uh, this is just a, a something that gives the town some feedback about whether the project would be eligible for funding and whether you'd have a decent chance of getting the grant for it. Okay. And we would, and the, the MVP program already paid for the design, the green design of the Leary lot. And so Chris would just break out the cost of like permanent pavers, you know, things that are green versus just, you know, paving it over traditionally. Okay, so do I have a vote on the uh, letter of interest? Well, I'll make the motion uh, to um, send a letter of interest for the Leary lot and um, the flood resiliency for the sewer treatment plant. I'll support the sewer plant at the moment. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. I'm going to abstain. I okay. Hi, David. And here again, I just want to make it perfectly clear. This is just for letter of interest. This is not an application. That is correct. Until we have somebody that we have hired to do the writing and administration of grants. And it's going to be taken out of the select board's office. The select board's office will have no responsibility for these. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next thing we have is the uh, letter of support of acquisition of land for the fish the division of fish and game. Chris had his hand up. If he's, if that's okay. Who? Chris. Trevor. No, Chris had his hand up before you went on. Oh. I can't see if this hands up. I can't see it because I don't get multiple. No. I just wanted to um, give you a very, very quick uh, update that the fifth round MVP grant that we're working for. And we have a, a regional climate forum that is um, scheduled now for April 2nd. Just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Um, we moved it from February to April for um, COVID. 
and it'll be happening at Frontier High School on a Saturday. Um, hope that a lot of town residents will um, participate in this um, like they did the last time, but we have 34 speakers lined up for this workshop and it's gonna be really interesting and exciting, I think. Uh, we also have both uh, Senator Comerford and Representative Blay coming to speak at it. And mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, it's just, a, it's gonna be a great event. And I just wanted you to all be aware of that. And Thank the you. other projects in the, in the fifth round grant are, are moving along really well without um, any real problems. So just wanted to quickly update you. Thank you. Yeah, that's plenty. Okay function last time was just amazing. I, I just can imagine it's going to be that much better this time. I just feel like we would be anxious to get out, hopefully by April and uh, great speakers, great topics. Um, I'm excited for it again. Free lunch again. <laughs> Free lunch. Sticky buns. <laughs> no, just catered. Oh, catered okay. Free lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, as we said, the next thing is the uh, Department of Fish and Game. Uh, it's the acquisition of land. This, this is the land over by the White Birch Campgrounds. Is that right? There's a pond over there and stuff. That's what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. The map. I would just make a motion that we um, send a letter of support. I'd second that motion. Possible. Any further discussion? Uh, this just speeds up. The, on all those. Oh, I was just going to say this just speeds up our letter of support. Just speeds up the process. So um, we would yeah. just hope that Casey can get it out so that we can just move ahead. You can't see your hand. Go ahead. Very good. They're muted. You're muted. Who's Casey. got their hand up? Uh, right now, the letter of support has all three of you signing, Mr. Chair. Do yep. you want to change that to have one member of the board represent, or do you all three want to sign it? Um, can you just have um, the chair sign or just use our stamps? Yeah, either one is fine with me. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, if you just have the papers for me to sign after the meeting, I'll come in there and sign them, Casey. Thank you. Okay. I'll find the agenda. Um, oh, we got to vote on it. I vote yes. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry about that. Trevor? Yeah, yes. I, I, Trevor McDaniel. Dave. I, Dave Wolfram. So, Thank 300. You. Uh, next few things are placeholders. Um, I know uh, we've got some of the things for the, uh, the the budget in our packets to review, but um, I don't think we're going to review them tonight. Well, uh, Brenda oh. said she needed them by Friday, so. <laughs> oh. But I don't see Board of Health what? in here. Yeah, no. Brenda needed them by Friday. I think we could, Mr. Chair. Always. I have a suggestion. Turn them in as drafts. Okay. And let people know they could change. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I, I don't see Board of Health in here. I, you have to ask Alex about that. <laughs> going on? Where's the Board of Health budget? You're late. No, I sent it in. Uh, Brenda and I had a discussion and everything like that uh, probably two or three weeks ago. Okay. With the board uh, here? Just make sure that. I don't see it. The Board of Health hasn't seen it, Alex. No, we have not seen it. Oh, Board of how Health come? Seen it. Well, you guys should because you it. gave it to because Brenda, not it to us. <laughs> yeah, no, we need we need to look at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's look it, has at it. To, it has to come to the select. Do you guys want to go ahead and um, take a look at it um, next you week? Just, I mean, uh, tomorrow or something? Yeah, just e email it to us, and we'll I'll start looking at it and okay. uh, consider it done. I hate that these have been so rushed and not really rushed. It's just my fault. There's so much going on right now, but um, it's it's been haphazard and I feel like we really need to take a meeting to go over just budgets. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
we, we well, need to we normally do. We yeah, normally I know. Do. And we just, we haven't. We missed out on Boston and. Um, well, everything's been so busy too. I, uh, oh. So should we just take a vote to submit these to Brenda as a uh, draft? Go ahead, Casey. I just wanted, Mr. Chair, through you, I wanted to remind everybody that one of the conversations that we had end of that end of last month in terms of discussing budgets included the the supposition that we were going to get to Boston and be able to reach yeah. out to some of the resources we might have been able to see there. So that's yeah. one of the reasons that you had held off on doing the budgets. Yep. So if yeah. If there's consensus on me sending an email to Brenda saying these budgets are draft only and are subject to change after final review from the select board board of health, I can do that. How do you feel about contracted services? I mean, that's that's our largest budget. So do you feel like you have some more work to do on that? I think there's a little we could do. Um, and I so what everybody should know, let me back up a moment. I am training Jennifer how to do these and yeah. she's been working closely with Brenda. Yeah. And so as, as they've been discussing expenditures, Jennifer and I have been checking in and yeah. what we did, there's a couple of items that we, we were a little unsure of. So I said to Jennifer today, I said, consider this a draft budget, but now that the board has something to look at, We'll see. I think there's some. There was a proposal on that I considered that I don't think we can afford to do, because I know that there's other higher expenses that are going to come through. Right. I think this could be considered substantially complete, but not fully complete. If something, I would I would want to go back with Jennifer and take a look at a couple of items that are in there. Well, um, we did. If you notice, if, as you go through this, if you have questions. Feel free to reach out to me or Jennifer, but I would, I would say that that research and those discussions between Brenda and Jennifer um, were pretty thorough. The things that you aren't seeing are pay, there's a the payroll budget, but there's a few there's some minor increases because of training issues, you know, training costs and such such things like that. Um, how do you contracted services? This? I think should I think could have one more look through. Yeah, I think so too. Um, do you feel like legal? Um, did we get an estimate from them yet? We did. Legal went up okay. slightly. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a. It wasn't as big an increase as we experienced in this year. Right. Well, but we made adjustments too. in um, some of the special project legal right. to reduce those to balance it. I think yep. the other one that I'm concerned about is general insurance. I that was, one I wouldn't consider complete. Right. Um, I was okay. just going to say we we also um, does this includes we have to go to the workshops to get our credits here. Those get ironed out at the end of the year, the nice fiscal time. year, Carolyn. Um, right. This is just the estimate based on what we've received from inf for information from Maya, and what we anticipate having to see if there are changes if certain changes could increase that budget that's why I, I always say to everybody about general insurance hold your breath because it's not final until it's voted well, they and also, like this year we had to do a transfer because of a claim they also didn't um list the uh mma at the maya rebate workshops anywhere on those descriptions never told you they which did one they were actually little where? icons they did I they did because I picked a couple of them. Um, go uh, back and look because I picked a couple of them that were Maya, just like Carolyn. I always I get, I always try to get the Maya ones. ones. Um, uh, were they? Trevor, uh, Jen signed me up for all the ones that give credit. So okay, right. good. Well, so it doesn't I'll tell matter. you what I, I signed up for almost all of them, but I couldn't see anywhere that there was a. There was a right. little. There's like a little star kind of. There thing. was a little emblem. Yeah, it was way off to the right. Oh God. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, nice if they would say something. That's why Carolyn and website. I always sign up for them. <laughs> right. We know. <laughs> Get all the credits you can, right, Carolyn? 
Well, the discount is, unfortunately, the discount was supposed to be like, then it goes back to free cash. Now it's the discount is put into the actual line item and it's terrible. So there's a little bit more pressure to go, but I mean, we go anyway, so it's no big deal, but. And then um, IT is um, just like 5,000. Yeah, um, we level funded that. There aren't huge asks in these budgets that you're looking at. Server now. coming up, nothing like that we have to do. Okay. So yeah, I recommend you just chew through them and we yep. can discuss them offline individually. And I would want to include Jennifer in those conversations so she gets a feel for where you guys fall down on some of these budgets. And then Alex, if you could just print a copy, just drop it in a box or whatever, I could pick it up. Actually, Thank Alex, because you. you're still, are yeah. you still at the office? Yeah, yeah, I'll just do it right now. No. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Just run it, run it over to um, everybody. Okay. I already, and then you can just email oh. it. Oh, no, One I'll, I'll be right over to, uh, to you, Caroline, too. You know, is, um, anyway. manage, <laughs> emergency management was another budget. You know, that looked like that went up a ton. And um, that's an ask. Again, yeah, I don't think that that needs to be that high. So I wouldn't put this one in. Okay. I, can revisit I, I have to see what the overall budget is, but I, I think that's going to be something that may be reabsorbed into another line item for a while. Yep. Um, I, I don't know. We have to look over the o overall budget when we get, when we look at everything. Well, everything's subject to change, yep. but that was the ask that was sent through. So we reflected mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But I do think it bears some consideration. So I think maybe you got, maybe talk about it and we can circle back around with finance okay. committee. Yeah. But I will send an email to Brenda saying that these are, can, these are not final budgets. Yeah. Okay. Did we get through the meeting? Good. Well, no. No, I guess not. We still have, uh, uh, let's see, Casey's, Casey's report. We don't, we don't have any permits for approval, do we? Casey? No. Okay. Uh, purchase and sale agreement, that's and no. Then. Appointments, no. Uh, mail. Well, we have the DDIC report. We'll just read it. We have to read it tonight, right? Yeah, we can read it some other time. Yep. Um, do we have actions commissions? We have to, uh, we have precinct to vote. said that we have to vote to um, uh, accept Jennifer Reynolds' resignation from the personnel board. In this, can yeah. you do yeah. it if it's not on the agenda? Well, we have in a the mail. It, we have a placeholder for appointments. Okay. Slash resignations, but so. Uh, let's see. If you uh, want me to put it on an agenda, I can. It'll just be two weeks. Oh, that's fine. I can. I don't see it anywhere. But I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the regs and resignation from Jennifer Reynolds for the um, from the personnel board. I want to thank her for her time and good luck um, up in Berniston. I'm sure that's probably why she did that. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'll second that motion. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn. Ness. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Um, CPC application for repurpose. I don't see that anywhere either. Um, I haven't seen. I saw the uh, drawing of the, you know, where we were going to put the senior center on, but I have not actually had a physical copy of that, you know, I where you, seen all. yeah, I, I haven't seen that. And that, I think that's part of the CPC um, application, right? Well, it's not in the packet, so I'll have to. Uh, I, haven't so seen I asked David earlier, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, through you. I asked David earlier yeah, yeah. what to do with that. I had received an email from a copy of an email from Julie Chalfont. 
um, with a draft application. Um, David, it, I was copied, but I didn't know what to whether that was a mail item or what, and I didn't get a chance to ask David okay. until right before the meeting. Isn't that right. CPC yeah. application due March first? Because then we could. Why don't we put this whole thing in on the February um, agenda so that we can get a hard copy? Because I'd like to see the plan to include the uh, senior center, yeah. social uh, community center. And then the addition of offices over connecting to the grammar school. Yeah. Um, I, I only saw yeah. it on the computer. Uh -huh. I haven't seen it on hard copy. No. And, and Julie wanted me to call her this afternoon and I got sidetracked and I never got to call her. So, uh, but uh, basically it's, uh, they're looking with the CPC, two things is the architectural and then the actual conception, uh, architectural drawings. Right. So, um, so um, and the second one, she, they also had the, uh, making sure that the, the current building is waterproof to a certain degree. So, um, and I apologize for not getting back to Julie and having that information for the meeting. Um. I have, uh, we have some, what it is, is envelope, what did you call it, Casey? Envelope protection, um, you know, for the actually building envelope, so. The building envelope, so the, yeah. the water seepage tends to come off the roof and underneath. Right, so I'm, I'm fine with us um, moving forward with this, and let's just put it on the agenda for next, you know, for our next meeting so that I mean, I just need, need a hard copy or something to look at. I'm I'm absolutely supportive yeah. of it and, and absolutely supportive of moving forward. Um, especially like I think once we get going with this one stop, having a our senior center, you know, be part a three town senior center being part of our our um, expansion or footprint of the town hall renovation product would be i mean that's just gonna i think gonna move through really quickly so we just got to get moving on this so it's in the you know in our system as a match um because i think yeah. there is going to be money so we need to get it on the town um you know we need to get it through the cpc and then get it on the town meeting um warrant yeah, I agree. So, um, what do you got for us, Casey? Mr. Chair, through you. So, I just wanted to give people an update on some of the things that we've been working on in here. Um, budgets was one of them. So, Jennifer has been working diligently on that. Um, CIPC had their meeting yesterday and um, Mark Brennan and I are going to be working on the spreadsheet um, to prioritize. And so he and I will set up a meeting to do that. I'll be working with Denise Mason. So Denise and I have had several meetings about the CCI. Um, I'll be working with her as we finalize at least some sort of conceptual discussion topic print out to have ready for Natalie and Joe's visit. And ultimately, that will help us push information out to the governor's office and and you know our other federal represent representation in Congress, because if that's what we're going to need to do, we need to refine the approach. Never mind taking it to the state. Um, so that's that's a piece that Denise and I have been working on for a couple weeks now. Um, other special projects are dealing with the South County Senior Center building issues, although a good portion of that Jennifer's handling, she's working with the contractor um, to deal with the water damage cleanup. Um, service coordination related to senior services is ongoing and that we, I wanted to take a moment right now to welcome Jennifer Remillard to our team. She will be starting as the South County Senior Center Director on Monday. So we'll do some onboarding and then, hi, Jennifer. Thank you, Casey. Welcome. Welcome. I think we're all so excited. excited to have you. 
Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm just hoping I don't blow her head off the first day she sits <laughs> with me. <laughs> and I do want to let everyone know that I give a lot of credit to my peers in Wheatley and Sunderland. They're very supportive. We're going to be working together to help Jennifer understand, you know, coming into the senior center and, and what, you know, we all hear, see, and have been trying to assist with. So it's not going to be a snap your fingers type of thing. It's going to be a process. And we're excited to start that process with you, Jennifer. Yes. We have I'm looking forward to learning all the nuances. So, um, <laughs> she says that now. Word, <laughs> no, no, I think, you know, there, it is a learning process and I look forward to listening to, to everything. So thank you for the welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Do we have any update on uh, what's happening at the church? You know, our Would you like that? I, I was about to get there. Oh, okay. I so, was so turn your ear, uh, turn your ears on, Jennifer. Um, so I've actually been working with Father John for a couple of months on a lease, and we're closer than we were. He and I have gone over several topics in this lease we've been working on with the diocese legal counsel and our legal counsel, um, because we don't know how long we're going to need to be there. And so that's one thing that we've been trying to work through and I have an email out to him. I'm waiting to hear back from him. He had a couple questions about some service things that impact the church, but by and large, I think he, I, he said to me, he would call me if there was a problem. By and large, I think things are going well. Um, I think a, a lot of thanks goes out to Sue Corey and her helpers and you know the assistance we've received from the diocese through Father John. And Suzanne, and we very, very much appreciate their their help to continue service programming. Um, and that's going to be another thing that Jennifer's going to going to walk into. So we're going to we're going to work with the guys on that one, Jennifer. Um, but yes, we've been working on that and just sort of working the kinks out over there. Um, other what, stuff that's what about our church there you know the, the next so there's an mou i'm, MOU I'm talking that. to council about an mou okay right. yes yes so that's another piece that that impacts senior services and where where they are so there's a couple of outstanding questions and i've been working on that as well um other projects that are sort of in play we've We've got consults out with legal on various projects. Um, we're working with, I'm working with on workflow stuff with the assistant superintendent on, there's various projects, but coordinating things, um, especially he's helping with the vault investigation. So we'll have more, I'll have more information on that and I'll probably send an, a short email out once I know something. But we'll be working with various people, not just from the state. I think there's some private groups that can help us. I just don't know the extent of what we're looking at yet. And again, that sort of popped up. I wasn't expecting that one. Um, I will say that grant administration, particularly related to MVP, is about 40 to 50 hours a month. And it is taking quite a bit of time. And it's not just me. It's three other people, including my, and, and me that are working on that because it's a very, fairly heavy grant administration process. We've had to create new admin documents to track the information to the satisfaction of the state. And it, it, take, it took some time to come up with those things. So that's a piece of, of the grant administration that everybody needs to understand. Um, we also have some administrative process adjustments that we're gonna be working on public records requests are taking up a great deal of time, not just my time, but several folks, several administrative folks and me. Um, and then we've got, there's all sorts of meetings that are going on, meetings during the day, meetings in the evening. This is my third meet, night meeting and my seventh meeting of the week, <laughs> which I have to say, I need to let people know this impacts my ability to provide deliverables. Um, we've got information we've got employment vacancies we have to deal with working with personnel board on the manual and they're interested in some policies um, there's collective bargaining agreements we have two right now that are going on 
there's other HR questions. And again, these sort of projects that, that slide in the radar screen around what's going on and they come up in phone calls and questions from the board and from other people. So that's the general overview. Jennifer's working on the website. She's doing a lot of work assisting with in the MVP grant to add, to put the page together for the MVP portion of that grant project. And so, but a good portion of her web processing is happening with um, both those things, the new website build out and the MVP work. Uh, plus scheduling for the meetings is pretty top heavy. We, we at the select board knows that we received a, an opinion from council cautioning us to make sure that any meeting that multiple select board members attend is a posted meeting. So I will prevail on the board to identify the meetings they think they plan to go to and let us know so that we can properly post. But that can take anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour, depending on what's going on. So I just want to caution everybody that if we're doing multiple meetings, we need to be aware of it. Okay. And that's really what's going on in here in a nutshell. There's other things, but in a nutshell, that's what's going on. I think you need to post the finance okay. committee meetings at a minimum. Jennifer's working on that now. Um, I don't know what other ones, Trevor and Dave, you think you want to attend, but. Well, any, any capital and any, any finance for the budget meetings, really, that's my thing. And any, obviously CCI, but I think they're posted already, so. I would say finance, I would say say CPI, um, SCIM, I both go to SCIM, um, I don't know, can you guys think of anything else you'd be interested in? I Mr. Mean, Chair, may I, I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, when does SCIMs usually meet? Uh, the next meeting is February 8th. Thank you. Meet uh, the second Tuesday of the month. Thank you. At six. It's supposed to be, the, it's actually supposed to be the third, but because of the conflict, they moved it to the second this, in February. Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that it was yeah. a conflict. I thought we were doing it. Yeah, it's out. It's supposed to be the third week, third Tuesday of the month. Except for February was the second. Yeah, because there's a conflict on the third one. Okay. So we have in the second week. Okay. Trevor, hmm. just talk. No okay. Can... Well, I just, I didn't want to interrupt. So I, um, I just wanted to, before we got to public comment, I just really wanted to um, talk about public comment a little bit real quick. And um, maybe a, a little explanation why I didn't take... Rocky's comment at the time. So, and and uh, this is really a proposal that I would want you guys to weigh in and think about, and then come back and talk about if you wanted to. Um, but trying to think of how we structure our meetings, we're going on a five-hour meeting right now. Five hours, like after a full day of work. I I don't have to tell you know Carolyn's been working all. We're all working all day, but five hours is wicked long for a meeting. So, um, and, the, and the other thing is the way we have our public comment structured right now, it's at the end of the meeting. So any business that we've talked about, we don't take public comment on. Really, I mean, I, I would like to structure our, our meetings so that we allow people to have public comment in the, in the beginning. And I'll, I'll read this. And then, um, because people want to comment on the items that are on the agenda for the day. So they're like, well, I see that you're gonna be talking about the wastewater project. I want to ask a question or give you a comment on that thing or some other thing they may wanna talk about. Um, so my thought was to allow public comment in the beginning. And the reason we were kind of having that at the end is because we wanted to get our business done, right? We're like, well, we gotta, we gotta get our business done. But what's happening now is like, we're not letting people talk until the end and we're letting people talk all the way through the meeting and really 
for us, uh, we should focus on our business on the agendas and not really engage public every single topic that we have, because what happens is the meetings run really long and and then you're letting the public kind of really I mean, they've elected us to do the business of the town. So I think that the idea is that we let public speak in the beginning. They're able to talk on any subject they want to that's on the agenda that day. We are able to then interpret that and maybe make make a decision or change our mind or take a piece of information that would enlighten our decision or validate our decision on any of the subjects that we're talking about. So um, I'll just read this real quick. So to provide the uh, select board meeting attendees the opportunity to share information with the board and to ensure the ability to conduct business in an orderly manner, the following procedures will be used at all meetings. Of course, this is a draft for everybody to decide on. Um, this procedure builds on the public comment policy adopted on November 11, 2021. Public comment would occur at the beginning of the meeting after the select board convenes. The public will have the opportunity to share their thoughts, concerns, but the select board will no longer entertain public comment during the decision-making discussion, except with persons presenting or speaking to the particular discussion decision item. So if we invite somebody to obviously speak on something. Um, the following outlines the procedure. So public comment will be held for up to 20 minutes. So just like we do now, we allow plenty of time. Um, speakers will be allowed two minutes to present their material. The presiding chair or designee may um, may permit extension of that time limit. We usually pretty pretty open with that. Um, uh, a member of the select board will time the public comment session. I and this this worked well when I testified testified in front of the state house today. Um, you know, you would just get a two minute warning, and then you'd have another minute to go. Um, and then. Uh, so discussion uh, topics for discussion will be limited to those under the authority of the select board. Speakers shall identify themselves, including their name, address, town uh, of residence, and if uh, representing a group, the name of that group. All remarks will be addressed through the presiding chair or designee at the meeting. So it was really just to kind of restructure so that we weren't like stretching out the topic so long and like engaging with public like we know our business and we need to take those votes and move along with that. And then, but I did, I, I felt like we weren't offering that ability to hear from the public until the end after all of our stuff is done. So my thought was like, let's have public comment towards the beginning. It doesn't have to be right at the beginning, but sometime towards the beginning of the meeting before we get into the discussion items so we can get all the, you know, all people, people get things off their mind or, or let us know. And then we would go on and, um, do the business of the day without getting into this back and forth of just between public comment every single item that we're talking about it just makes the process move a little quicker and maybe you know wouldn't be a five hour meeting I, so anyway I leave that for I, you to look at and think about I'm I'm okay with that the only thing I I'm just saying is it really have to be I want to make sure it's limited because what happens is you know, over the years, we did have public comment in the beginning. And the reason why we moved it to the end is because we were getting derailed all the time. Um, so yes, if we have a 15 or 20 minute limit and you and you limit people to a couple minutes, then I'm okay, I'm okay. And we don't engage. So the problem is, is that every time somebody makes a comment, we want to discuss that comment. And then we want to validate or or talk about that comment was, you know, you're right or you're not right, or we're going to do this. We just take the comment and we say, thank you for your comment. And we may, you know, if you wanted to say something or it is really important, but the whole idea is people can explain what they want to say. We take it, listen to it and move on and do our business because to have that back and forth constantly with people just stretches out the meeting and, and it's like, you know, it just takes forever. And I, I think, you know, people would have that ability up front. I agree with you because that's why we moved it because people will go on and on and on. We never get to the meeting and it would be five hours in. So right now it feels like the worst of both worlds where we're five hours in and people haven't been able to talk until the end. I'm sorry, Rocky, <laughs> he's, he's been hanging on the whole time. So then I leave it up to the Oh, he went to bed. He went to bed. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just rolling in the background. <laughs> oh, no, Rocky. There, there he is. <laughs> We're getting a little tired. Thank you, Rocky. Actually, this is my seventh meeting today, and I'm, I'm going yep. to Zoom. So, it's late. Uh, it's late, yes. Oh. So, 
Yeah. Alex has okay. his hand up. Um, yeah. Oh. If, if he wants to. Yes, Alex. Oh, okay, Persuade. sorry. Uh, I, Trevor, I think it's great uh, for the select board. Could we also tie that in for the Board of Health agenda as well? Uh, every item. Every item. So it's public comment at the beginning of a meeting, and that's it. Yeah. There, There's no discussion. They're joint agendas. Okay. Yes, they're joint agendas. So that's it. You get a meeting, and it'd be nice if many other boards would do the same because. Just focus on the business, take public comment. You don't have to answer it. You don't have to get into a big discussion. We got so much work to do and items yep. to do. We can just keep on moving on. Right. right. Rocky, okay. I think we want to hear from you. Yes, public comment, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're muted, muted now, too. You're muted. You're muted right. So I'd love to still hear you. Huh. No, actually, I'm fine. I kind of figured out my own answer. Oh, as, you did? As okay. Went on, I figured out my own answer. Thank Good. you. See that? We <laughs> answer yeah. things as we go. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Rocky. But we do appreciate you here. I really go home, everybody. Mm -hmm. Appreciate yeah, all the Rocky people. Really well. Well. Um, so I, oh, we have we, more comment. Uh, before we adjourn, I just want so Trevor and Dave, you would be okay. If I met with Casey and Denise, after Denise and Casey meet with Alice Rich to find out what she could or could not do, or whoever mm -hmm. the other person is, so that we can outreach to Jim McGovern's office, okay? Is this- This doesn't feel like it's in yeah. line with the, the agenda. Well, no, I just wanted to make sure before we, we don't have, we're not supposed to discuss anything until unless we got a posted meeting and this is unanticipated. This isn't public. You're not part of the public. Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> Rocky said he didn't have a comment. So I just. But, but we have another member of the comment of the, of the public. Sorry. Jennifer, you. and I, I think Anna Lee may want to say something as well because she's been here the yeah. whole time also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Trevor, I like your suggestion. I just wanted to say I support that. I think it's important um, because there are times where the board will vote on various topics before you get to public comment. And I think um, sometimes, you know, as a citizen, you get, you may feel frustrated because you can't um, speak to anything prior to that vote. So thank you for making that suggestion. Yeah. And I hope you move forward with it. Thank you. That, that was the goal. Hey, Annalie. Yeah, I don't have anything about the meeting. Annalie. Actually, I just wanted to attend, but I will say that at the planning board meetings, we have had two minute lim limits on our public comments. And when we tell the public about that beforehand, they've actually been very good. They've been very yep. concise. Um, and it's, it, it, we've reviewed it several times and it seems to have worked well. So yeah, go for it. Good. Give it Thank a try. You. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Annalie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other public comment? And then just, just, just so that Alex and anybody and Jen, when they're running the meeting, they, they will know like, just because of hands up, you're not calling on. So you have public comment to focus on and that's it. The rest of the meeting, you can just, unless there's obviously a presenter there or something like that where you're facilitating that discussion on, on business before us, but just a thought. You guys could think about it and we could vote it next meeting. Yeah. All righty. Sounds good. Anybody else out there? No? Motion to adjourn. No, unanticipated. Oh, what do you got for unanticipated? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, no anticipated. Go like, oh, I wanted to make going sure. back to it. There isn't any anticipated. Well, Is there? I want to make sure it's okay with you that if I met with Casey yes. and Denise and we sat together to approach of course. on how we're going to, I wanted to track down the park. Yeah. But I also grant, but I also, we got to, you know, we want to have some help here. Mm -hmm. and, yep. uh, but I, I feel, I feel like Denise has got to be there with us and Casey and, you know, but 
what we can do is also going to be dependent, you know, if finding this grant person to work with us. So I want to make sure after Casey and Denise do this, you know, interview kind of situation or would decide what they're going to do or take the risk or whatever we're going to do, that we then have the ability to sit down and start, you know, working on this. So I didn't want you to think that, I mean, we don't yeah, have no, to figure just out. report what, it back. Okay. Just, just okay. Report it back. I yeah. Just, sounds... just want to make sure it was okay with you okay. guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no problem. So we have a motion to adjourn on the floor. Any seconds? I will second that. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Thank Aye, you. Aye, David Wolfram.